everybody. Welcome to Radio Labyrinth. This is season nine, episode two. And uh, first things first, I got to say, Dustin, great job on the new uh, uh, theme song, man. You did a great job. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, cool. Thank you. Guys. It was great. Um, I enjoyed it very much. And uh, I thought the episode looked really good. We are going to continue to do these episodes for you. And our goal, by the way, is to get back together someplace where we can see each other and uh, throw bowls at each other. Like Jeff, you <laughs> get mad at me through bowls hit me in the head with him or did i throw a bullet at you yeah that's what happened it was so long ago that i can't forget or that i can't remember see i can't even remember to anyway i'm you know it's one of those types of deals but anyway yes great job uh dustin and uh the youtube video uh that we do each and every week that dustin puts together if you're watching it like and follow us um and make sure that you comment and share it with your friends uh, Dustin put out a couple of really cool um, shorts, YouTube shorts. Great. Um, you, you found an algorithm wave to ride right there because uh, we got a couple thousand views on those, and that was pretty awesome. Yeah, these short videos are taken off on YouTube, like these mm -hmm. super short videos. Yeah, And I like them better than, than TikTok. I'm starting to not like TikTok uh, as much as I did, just because if you're our age, you're not going to get a lot of traction on there. I don't see people our age getting a lot of traction on there. No. Maybe Steph could. I don't know. I never get on there. Yeah. It's it's weird. And then they're very strict. Just the Chinese don't want to piss off uh, our politicians who keep threatening to ban them. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Please remember that uh, you can become a Patreon member of the show and get uh, our weekly uh, Patreon show. Uh, and that's at any level. You just go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. Also remember to like us, rate us, review us wherever you listen to your podcast, be that Spotify, iTunes, or whatever. And uh, I want to thank our executive producers. Our producers uh, come in at the $25 level. And when you sign up as a producer, you get uh, a t-shirt from our, shore, our store, uh, you get a doodle, and of course you get a credit because you are a producer and that makes you, uh, you know, our little IMDB of sorts. So thank you to Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Jeff Peterson, Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, uh, congratulations on your new puppy. Uh, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Kevin Jackson, Mike D, and Matt Carter. So we thank you guys very much. Uh, we do have another video this week. Um, I think I want to call this one uh, Wally in Space. Captain's Log. Stardate 01002424. We are in orbit around the ice planet Badger, where I've detected an unusual biosignature. Lieutenant Jinkman is presently conducting further scans to help us figure out what in the living fuck is going on down there. The Heisenberg B remains cloaked behind Badger's largest moon, B-694, while they await my order to reveal themselves. Yo, Captain Cook, this scanner is like all messed up. The readings are showing life, but they're like all tweaked out and repeating the same thing over and over. Tone it down, bitch! Jinkman, send a low-level pulse of plasma, frequency 66.8 kigglebirds, subsonic brain interface, and now. Yo, sweet Captain Cook, lobotomy time, you ice planet losers, zap, bitch! Hey Vince, bring us back. We can do this anthology shit. Walter and Jesse, in space, seriously. You can CGI some stupid ass robot so you only have to pay Aaron for voiceover work. And hear me out. We can get other cast members to do some stunt casting. Let me know. I'll be doing press for my new film Argyle soon. Sure. I loved working with Bryce Dallas Howard, Henry Cavill, and that wrestler guy. But I'm itching to get back on TV. Here's Dustin to tell you about the merch. Buy a t-shirt, bitch! Yeah, still going strong. We've got our 10% off still going to the end of the month. So just put in code RLP123 at checkout and you'll get 10% off your order. So did you guys all have a chance to watch the entire Club Shay Shay with Cat Williams? It took me a few days, but yeah. See, I don't do that. When I go into a strip club, I'm going in there to help that person get a better life. And then you have all these comedians who aren't really comedians, like Kevin Hart goes into a strip club and he tries to find a stripper who's shorter than he is. But he has to go to a strip club where there's little people because he's tiny and he's not a real comedian. He's a play. I got deep into that. You guys all watched it, right? Yeah. I have not watched it. Yes. You have not, but you've heard about that and you've, yeah. you've seen some of the reaction. I mean, you it's know. responsible for about 50% of all memes on the internet right now. 
Yeah. That's true. And then Ice Cube had to come out and explain why why um, I got to play Money Mike. And then they had to get the other guy to play Santa Claus. And I was like, do I look like Santa Claus to you? I'm five foot seven, two, four, whatever. Who's the hero in this whole story? Mark Curry from Hanging with Mr. Hooper. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, boy, that really, uh, you, you had to watch it and then I, I better not get into it. I mean, it's one thing to do an impression of Cat Williams, who has a very distinct voice and he's up here like this and he's very straight and, and he talks fast and stuff. But to do Shannon Sharp, I might get in trouble. Well, you do, do Charles Barkley. Well, Charles Barkley just sort of talked like <laughs> this. Clean your car, dude. Clean your car. That's the only thing he ever said to me in my life is clean your car, dude. Why would you get in trouble doing Shannon Sharp? Because of his lisp? Now, hold on, hold on a minute now. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do because I don't want to. But I <laughs> it was did, a good I, interview. I started. Yeah, it was a great interview. And then I it led me down this rabbit hole on YouTube because then I found this. There's a show called Podcast Cringe. You guys heard of this? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. It just talks about all the popular podcasts and the Joe Rogan Bros. And Cat made a good, very good point because a lot of the comedians that. Joe Rogan that are in that Joe Rogan group, that bubble of podcast, they, they all start their own podcast and then they, they either do really well or they fail. Like uh, Whitney Cummings, she has one and then she's always going on other shows and crying and it's just this big circle jerk of emotions and stuff. And then you got Bert and Tom Segura who uh, their numbers are going down and I, I think a lot of podcasts are going down, but I, I listen to a lot of those shows for the long, you know, I'd make sure to listen to all of them and I'm, I listen to way less now because a, I'm into Harlan Williams, which is just something that makes me laugh. And it's just nonsense. And I like Dudesy because for the same reason, you know, and I like the novelty part of it where they do the voices and stuff. Um, but Kat, it, this podcast cringe show really talks an awful lot about, you know, people will go on Rogan and then he brings up Shane Gillis and how Gillis went on there the first time and he told a joke that Rogan didn't get and Rogan was kind of a dick about it to him. But he doesn't need Rogan anymore because his podcast gets almost as many, if not more, listens. And he's super popular and doesn't need any of that. And then the conversation was about all these new um, comedy specials. Um, so far, the my favorite one that I've watched in the last month or so has been the Chappelle one. Until this week when uh, Dustin and I watched uh, the, uh, the brand new George Carlin special, wow. which came out of fucking nowhere. Uh, Dudesy, which is Chad Culchin and uh, Will Sasso. Uh, it's a one-hour special with uh, all sorts of uh, of artificial, Im- well, images that were created by AI that kind of go along with what he's talking about. And it's not, I would say it's about 80%, maybe 85% George Carlin. But at times, it really has a feel like you're watching a, um, a, a, ni- a late 90s uh, early 2000 George Carlin special. Do you get that feeling from it, Dustin? Yeah, yeah. It felt like it was one of those that you, oh, I must have missed this one. Mm-hmm. And because it doesn't sound like the gravelly voice Carlin from like maybe the last 10 years, it sounds like something from like the late 80s. It did have a Did you guys watch any of it at all? <laughs> no, I was going to see what Dustin showed for clips. Yeah, did you bring some clips, Dustin? Yeah, I've got some clips. Yeah, but- before we play them, though, yeah. I had no idea they were doing this. And now a year ago, they put out the Tom Brady one and Tom Brady threatened them with a lawsuit and, you know, cease and desist. So they took it down and they call him football baby. Now that's his name. This one, it opens up with with dudes. He's saying this is not really George Carlin. And what's yeah. the name of the special? Is it I'm dead or I'm glad I'm dead. Yeah, I'm glad I'm dead. The kayfabe part of this is that the A.I. wrote the jokes. There's no way the A.I. wrote these jokes. This is Chad wrote these jokes i'm pretty sure yeah it's got to be people are always going to want a real uh, flesh and blood human being observing the world and telling jokes about it and i get that i really do but if you can keep an open mind i think i can make a case for at least one comedian we can all agree is better in ai form bill cosby (laughs) with ai bill cosby you get all of the Cosby jokes with none of the Cosby rips. <laughs> AI Bill Cosby doesn't even have a penis. AI Bill Cosby couldn't rip even if he wanted to. The worst thing AI Bill Cosby could do is send an unsolicited AI generated dick pic, which means it won't really look that much like a dick anyway. <laughs> 
got the cadence down. Uh, the voice is a little off. The voice, yeah, the voice is off a little bit, but the the cadence is amazing. Yeah, the hit it's hit and miss <clears throat> on some of it, but um, like he goes through and explains. I mean, there's he goes just like Carlin. He hits politics. He hits religion. He hits um, you know, issues that have come out since he's died. Well, everything he talks about came out after he's dead. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, he didn't even go address back it. Anything. Yeah, what one do you have now? Here's a little example of what I mean. In 2022, while the Supreme Court was overturning Roe versus Wade and 19 kids were getting gunned down at a school in Uvalde, Texas, the most watched video on YouTube was Amber Heard talking about taking a shit in Johnny Depp's bed. <laughs> And that was by design. When the billionaires were presented with the news that the highest court in the land had been overtaken by Christian fundamentalists who rolled back basic human rights for women 75 years and the simultaneous news that almost 20 children were slaughtered in yet another mass shooting while the cops stood by and watched, they decided to prioritize something else entirely. A celebrity turd. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it gets really, really political in the middle part of the of the special so if you're going to get upset by things like that or you tend to get upset by things like that i don't recommend it but it it starts off very heavily carlin um and it ends the ending is amazing and this is only the beginning by the way and this point is made in the special that uh people are going to come back to life and they're going to get better and better and better at it unless their families come out and say don't you're not allowed to do this which I imagine Carlin's daughter might do something about, or his family, or his estate, or whatever might do something about it. That's they might what I was waiting for. Yeah, I was waiting for. Because he says this is an impression. This is an yeah. impression. And throughout the whole thing, uh, he says, "The voice says I'm not really George Carlin." And at the end, it, you know, it just goes back and forth. But George Carlin is one of my favorite comedians of all time. I loved him. I mean, even I, I even had Jeff stalk him so I could get his autograph, and uh, that Jeff did that very nicely. And uh, Got to meet him a couple of times and see him live a couple of times. And those are very memorable to me. And this didn't piss me off. And I thought it would, but it did. So it just it's coming. Um, you're going to be able to, if Hollywood agrees and all these people agree, like people have been talking about, you know, I want to watch an episode of The Simpsons with this, 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 and this in it. And you just go in and you type it in and then boom, it'll be there. And you'll be able to watch it. And it'll be yours. But you'll have to pay. <laughs> So I don't know. I mean, I, I see the work that they do on this dudesy podcast and I'm like my shitty little videos I make every week that take forever to make. And I have to like fight with AI to make the images that I want. Um, I'm like, why even bother? But they make me happy so many. But don't it. you guys think, I mean, I obviously I hate this crap. I hate it mm -hmm. because to me, when you die, that's what makes it special. You There's a finite time on this earth. And then when you're gone, it's over. That's why it mm -hmm. makes it so special. And there's no way that they can ever truly get the essence of these people. Yet. Yeah. Even even still, I, I don't want it. I don't oh, want it. Oh, I know. It. I know. People don't. You, I don't of, want it. No. People are getting what they never asked for. Yeah. And again, I, I, didn't, I didn't think I'd want it, but I listened to it and I laughed a whole bunch. But I know that it's not George Carlin. And I it's like... When Rich Little used to do stuff, I knew that it wasn't the person, but I liked that Rich Little was doing an impression of them. This to me is an impression. I hope, you know, that, but for profit, I mean, there's all sorts of things to worry about, right? Or, or that'll piss you off about this. And I totally get what you're saying, Steph. I'm not arguing at all against what you're saying. And I agree with that in a way, but I also was like, oh, that was kind of cool. No, and if I could go like on a holodeck and hang out with my granny, sure. Yeah. That sure. would be great. Yeah. Like she was, I mean, she, like she was really there and mm -hmm. we're having conversations and all that kind of stuff. That would be neat to me. Get I would enjoy mushrooms. that. Yeah. Well, no, if there were a holodeck, where you could, if there were a holodeck where you could hang out with a woman, my grandma would be the last woman, <laughs> maybe the third, <laughs> <laughs> but it would, there'd be other women on that holodeck first and it would be in, um, uh, make sure the door is locked mode. It was, I mean, as far he does go into the car took away the horse and buggy, the print press took away the, um, you know, technology is always going to go forward and it's just how you use it. It's always demonized no matter what it is. And this is a little more close to home, but 
I think I think it all in all it's it's the same. It's going to be something that you that you can use or something that will help you. Um, but there's always going to be pushback against it until it's you know the norm, and it looks like it's going that way. It is, and it's going to encompass everything. Um, but the point that it makes that the the AI makes, and this is that you know we have we're walking around with uh, this tool in our pockets that has you know the answers to everything. There's the, the wealth of humanity, the knowledge we have, and we use it to watch um, you know cats. Hey, you fall. did get a new iPhone. I've had a new iPhone for a while. I liked it. I like it, and I don't like it. Um, I'll support it until they start wrapping AIs in skin suits and sending them back in time to kill Sarah Connor. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that either. I also don't want a lippy sex doll. You're here for one thing, to clean. You don't want any sass mouth? I don't want no sass mouth. I want you to clean everything, Tracy Lord's 1989 doll. I Radio said 1989. Yeah. <laughs> 1989. She was old. She's older than me, so. She was on the Gilmore Girls. Was she? She had a she had a small role on there, yeah. which Jeff, I, you know, like I said, I finished it, Jeff, and then I watched the movie, and it would just, I want more, kill more girls, I want more. Yeah, maybe AI will create more. You read a book? I don't want it if AI makes it. Read the Lauren Graham books. Oh, okay, I'll do the that. Audio books, she reads them. They're good. That inn that they that they based it on, I looked it up. It's the Mayflower Inn in Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, you could just roll up in there on a Wednesday, eleven hundred dollars a night. Bam. Yep. Dang. I ain't going there. <laughs> I am not going there. Uh we could a couple other things we could talk about, but um that AI thing I think for me is is just blew me away. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that there are a lot of comedians out there that don't need AI to be funny, and I'm one of them because I'm Cat Williams. <laughs> and you know, I never let Harvey Weinstein put my penis in his mouth. <laughs> Or P. Diddy? Or P. Diddy, uh, yeah. Or P. Diddy, that's right. I mean, he. there were two penises in front of them, and none of them was mine. So, <laughs> nope, my penis never went in Harvey Weinstein's mouth. They should have had you host the Golden Globes, Cat. I would have done better than Joe Coy, but, you know, the brother did what he did, you know. <laughs> he, he wasn't very confident in telling his Taylor Swift joke. And then, he wasn't. That was the problem with that joke. And then he had to go, he had to get on his knees and explain the joke because media sucks taylor swift's dicks. i hate everybody who hosts every one of these award shows though well, but he they was, laugh at gervais they laugh at yeah. him he's yeah, but he so would, funny he had, they can't have ricky gervais people are too sensitive for ricky gervais yeah but joe coy is this guy he's been a touring comic for a very long time he's a funny guy sure he's a nice guy i've never met him but he uh he told the joke but he in the middle of the joke you could see that he and you could you could hear it if you didn't see it that he wasn't confident in telling the joke. And then immediately they cut to her and she's just <laughs> that stupid Taylor Swift. Yeah. I'm pissed face, fuck her. Now, Jim Gaffigan got a silence. He did? What, what joke did he say? I believe I'm in the entertainment industry. <laughs> I can't. I, you know, it's so unlikely. I'm from a small town in Indiana. I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> I was like, whoa, he won't be asked back. <laughs> Yeah, but he wasn't making a he was making a joke. Oh God, and he was making a meta joke that they didn't understand. Right. Same thing with with Aaron Rodgers and Jimmy Kimmel and this whole stupid thing. And I just don't care. I don't care anymore. And Pat Ma McAfee. What happened was is that Disney got mad, and Pat McAfee had to tell Aaron Rodgers, "I don't want you on the show anymore. You can't come on the show anymore because Disney owns Jimmy Kimmel and Disney owns McAfee. Who do you think they have more money? And it's just all stupid." I don't know the whole the whole thing. I'm just tired of hearing about it. It's no, it's not important at all what Aaron Rodgers thinks uh, if, when he makes a joke about Kimmel. And it's not important when Kimmel calls him an idiot. So it's just dumb, dumb, yeah, dumb. Nobody dumb. cares. Nobody cares. I like how um how Tim Dillon how he went after the news outlets this week about. Well, I haven't um, listened yet. Tell it. Uh, tell. They've been rolling out these Epstein stories, and he goes, and I don't care what network you go to, they'll start. Uh, saying different people on the list, and then they'll go, but that does not mean that they actually did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And he said, it doesn't matter who, what news out, you know, because all of these rich, you know, whatever, they own the news. Yes. So they can't go hard on them. It's news.
trailers and trains with them. Well, this is pretty cool. I mean, The Sopranos, 25-year anniversary. How is it 25 years since the show premiered? How is it that it's 25 Crazy. years? It's a new year, and I haven't even started a rewatch, and now I have to because there's what? New shit in all of them? Oh, the, now, you, really... now you have to watch it every episode on TikTok where they, they run through every episode in 25 seconds. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I watched a few of them, and it is pretty fun to do it. Is it? They yeah. Get the swear words is. out? Uh, I can't TikTok doesn't words allow, that. they don't like profanity on TikTok. I don't think there were swear words in, in the few that I watched. Yeah. But so it's, it's like that cool. mad. It's like that Mad TV on. Remember that old Mad yeah. TV bit with Will Sasso and I forget the girl's name, but they did the Sopranos on Pax. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If they cut out all the murders and swear words. But anyway, go ahead. Steph. It's kind of like that. So you can go on TikTok and I'm watch the Sopranos on TikTok. I'm going to watch the guy who takes the uh, Sesame Street videos and edits them to match what's going on on the Sopranos. <laughs> Those are funny. <laughs> that would be good. Uh, and then Max is launching their 25th anniversary Sopranos collection today, which I'm very excited about. It includes 15 deleted scenes, three of which have never been released. And it also includes over five hours of behind the scenes featurette content. So I definitely want to see these behind the scenes. All right. Looks like Tim's doing another rewatch yet again. <laughs> I mean, five hours. That's that's a lot of content. And uh, shooting soon in Atlanta. This sounds really good. Uh, they're calling it Wolverines, and it's about the inception of Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. and it's going to be directed by Jason Reitman. Jason Reitman, so it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah, it was Ooh. delayed because of the strike. Let's get some cast predictions here, because they don't haven't casted anybody yet, All and right, it's going to be the original cast. Before that, though, do you know why it's called Wolverines? Mm, because they're from Michigan? I no, think no, the first, the first, first sketch. sketch. Let us begin... Repeat after me. I would like. I would like to feed your fingertips. To feed your fingertips to the Wolverines. To the Wolverines. <laughs> so let's start. John Belushi. Who could play John Belushi? Uh, the commish is too old. He can't play him again. There's a good comedian named uh, Sandy Danto who could play him. All right, I'll go with that because it looks like him. What about little Harvey Guillaume or whatever from what we do in the shadows? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Oh, yeah. Guillermo. Yeah, Guillermo could probably play him. All right. Dan Aykroyd. Mm, 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 mm. We don't know enough young people. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't know enough 20-somethings yeah. to be able to do this. I cannot think of who would play him. Yeah, I need a, sh I need a cast list here. Pull up, pull up the cast from a, a stupid and futile gesture. Because what they're all in, they're all going to be in their, what, late 20s? Yeah. So you're Chase looking to see someone play Bill Murray, Gilda Radner. Yeah, Chevy Chase was the oldest. So you could have, uh, I don't know, that Star Wars guy play him. It's going to be somebody tall. It, we're not going to be able to figure out because we don't know enough young people. To... No. We'll have no. to do this. If anybody, if you're watching the show, why don't you put some suggestions in here is what I would say. Let us know what you who you think should be cast in it because they haven't cast it yet. That's right. And they've got, um, if you have a, a longer 70s-like look, they're actually casting for the audience and everything else because they're shooting it in Fayetteville. So Maybe Adam Murray should go up for that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Was Adam would probably be really good for yeah. any part. Oh, what are we talking about? Josh, he should go for it. Yeah. Josh hey, could be Belushi. He could. <laughs> he could. He could be Belushi. He could be Belushi. He could be oh. Belushi. Josh should go for it. We gotta we gotta text him and, and tell him to go out and try out for that. Cut his hair, dye it black, show up in a blues brothers costume. Uh, <laughs> or killer no, bees. A killer bee outfit. He doesn't have yeah. to cut his hair because Belushi's hair wasn't short. Or the samurai sword. Yeah, to begin yeah. with his hair was yeah, his hair was kind Uh so that should be good. And along that same timeline, um, Cindy Morgan died in the Who Died section. Yes. And if you don't know who Cindy Morgan is by her name, she was the mega, mega hottie from Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Uh, Lois did an impression of her own family guy. Mm -hmm. um, and she died at 69. You're, you're rewatching Larry Sanders, right, Tim? Yeah. I, well, I in the, put it on pause for a bit. She was in the second episode, the David Spade feud episode. She played that flight attendant at the beginning. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I've already watched that one, but yeah. Natural causes, but I don't know. It's suspicious. 
Yeah, oh, okay. Because I read a story that she had had a feud with somebody, and then I read yeah. that the only reason they found her is because of the smell. Yeah. yeah. Her, her roommate came home and found her dead. Oh, oh. So she was not having a good uh, end of oh, life. She right. had a roommate. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. yeah. Drugs, maybe? Mm. I don't know. There's some weird shit going on. I hope they investigate it. Well, okay. there. All you Star Wars fans, I mean, all of our Mandalorian fans, there's going to be a Mandalorian and Grogu movie. Yay. Now. Yeah, that'll be, ex- I'm looking forward to that. I will go see I will that. go to is that. Yeah. Is that in lieu of doing more episodes? It didn't, I didn't see that in the article, but Favreau, Favreau is directing the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So we know it'll be good. And I'm yeah. sure it'll be wrought with who a million cameos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be worth it. I think they're talking about you know not having a second season of uh, Ahsoka, and I'm thinking that it'll probably they're just going to tie everything into this into this movie. I thought I, I read they it back. A, they, they are getting yeah. a second season are they of Ahsoka. Getting one? Good, yeah, good, just good. just today, I think it, the news came out. Obviously, Jodie Foster's back in the news because that new season of True Detective is going to be coming out soon, and it looks pretty good. It does, uh, but apparently. People are some people are angry with her because she made some disparaging comments about Gen Zers mm-hmm. and mostly that they're kind of annoying to work with because they are late a lot and they're pretty lackadaisical attitude in general towards everything. Not feeling it. She's not wrong, though. No, she's not wrong. She's not wrong. We play who's here. Who's coming in after the weekend at my job? Yeah, we do. Really? <laughs> yep. Sure do. I mean, there's we have uh, new employees every other day, and it's all of these twenty year olds, twenty one year olds. They they work a week, they work two weeks, sometimes they work an hour, get their crap and leave. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable. Bring their moms to the interview with them. Yeah, we've had that. Oh, okay, you know, at least smoke weed in the bathroom. Yeah, um, yeah at the, the doctor's office. So yeah, in. yeah. I you know I that's like in a way I admire them. Because, uh, you know, I was always told, you're getting a job and you stick with it. Yeah, forever. You stay there and you die. Mm-hmm. And I have, uh, yeah, I've lived that prophecy. So in a way, I kind of, I like how they kind of jump around and they don't care about time on the job. But I have read a study where the employers are starting to look at that. Oh, yeah? Starting to not hire them. because are their there's... parents paying all their bills? What's going on? I think maybe yeah. that's what's... I think they all live with their they parents. They all live at home, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they don't have rent. They're not trying to hustle like, you know, we were, because we didn't want to live at home with our parents. So I, I you had to work. Home. Can't afford yeah. rent. BlackRock owns everything. This is true. Um, and I... What's also ironic about that is we all own stock in BlackRock if you have a 401k. <laughs> not me. I have Vanguard. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Lottie freaking die for you. <laughs> the same fucking thing. They do the same fucking thing. But I'm, I'm sure, Judy. You, I, in spite of your your reticence toward AI, the Carlin thing. I mean, if George Carlin were alive, he would have done this routine about these fucking billionaires. And that's all I'm going to say. So if you just watch that part, it's very. He probably would have. It probably would have been funnier, though, I think, would've, if he would have done it was. himself. Yes. Um. So, yeah, the, the little Noah no, Schnapp from. Stranger Things is uh is he Jewish? Is Schnapp a Jewish name? I don't know. But he said he supported Palestine, right? No, he supported Israel, right? Yeah, he basically said if you if you aren't standing with Israel, then you are against them. Mm-hmm. Basically. I don't think you need to publicly stand with anybody. How about that? How about you just don't, you know, you keep it at home like you used to? Well, why why were you saying you stand with Stephen Hawking then? Because he can't stand for himself. <laughs> I was going to say, you stand beside of him. Feel me over to the blowjob room. <laughs> I didn't have to get all crippled and get ALS and ride around in a wheelchair to get my blowjobs on Epstein Island. I never went to Epstein Island. I think that the that a lot of these stories are bullshit. This guy is allowed to say whatever he wants. And because he said what he wanted to, you have all these fake people they're probably all internet trolls, right? Like, you know, X accounts that you, they they have like a cat for the logo or whatever for the, I don't know. It's just, I don't get this. The young people who, who don't want to work, but can spend eight hours a day blocking traffic in cities all over the country because they think they know what's going on in the Middle East. Something that's been going on over there, by the way, since, I don't know, 
three thousand years ago, two thousand years ago. Yeah, nobody's ever going to fix it. It's unfixable. You're gonna, right. You're going to solve it by standing in front of uh, uh, the Lincoln Tunnel in New York City or blocking traffic. No, you're not going to solve it. No. When you have people who take a religion so seriously that it dictates every decision of their entire life, you can't. There's nothing you can do. But these aren't even, quote unquote, Palestinians. It's just everything to me is manufactured. There just wasn't. 10,000 Palestinian flags didn't just show up out of nowhere, you know, because it was a grassroots thing. These are done. They were made. They were shipped here by an NGO. Look up what an NGO is if you don't know what it is. All this stuff is fake. Like all the, like the Jimmy Kimmel and Aaron Rodgers. It's just dumb shit to distract people and keep, keep them fighting each other. Oh, I didn't even finish saying what the story was, is that they were threatening to boycott Stranger yeah. Things over him saying that. Go ahead and boycott it. They're not yeah. rated. Yeah, yeah, you think some fifteen-year-old kid gives don't a crap? Give a no, they don't no. care. They're watching. No. They're watching. Everybody wants to see this final season. What am I saying? Fifteen-year-old kid, fifty-year-old kid. I mean, everybody wants to see the final I, I season. Could, I could of tell, any of them, any of them, could tell you more about Stranger Things than they could about what's going on over there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, we're not taking a side either way. Even though I have my own opinion, I just don't share it. I have my own opinion as well. And, and I don't share it, but I will say that there are 31 Arab states. There is one Jewish state. And why can't you just let them have it? Anyway, McDonald's makes a better burger. Um, they're going to be using a brioche bun. Didn't they try this already? <laughs> Remember, they, they did this thing. Where we're making burgers and sandwiches for adults now. And they sucked. Yeah, because well, yeah, they I kept the same products. They just rearranged them. Right. Now they're they're substituting like I think today they came out first with the Big Mac. So now you get two or uh, four patties on a Big Mac. So they double up the meat on it. Are you I'm lying to, to me? No. You going to go get that, Tim? Fuck yeah. I love Big Macs. I liked it when they put the quarter pounder meat on them and they did that one week. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Well, they're going to put you know, they're going to put more sauce on your Big Mac. Okay. And they're uh, and they're going to make the cheese meltier. Mm hmm. And they're going to give you fresher lettuce and pickles. Okay. Because I guess they were giving you old stuff before that had... Remember when they used to put like 50 pickles on a, on a I know. When you went in there, they dumped a whole bucket of pickles over your head. <laughs> now they only give you like one. Uh, your onions will be rehydrated after purchase. Huh? How are they going to do that? No, I guess they got some fancy... Here's your onion hydrator. packet and they just sprinkle it in your mouth and make sure you That's have enough cool. saliva. You had to go... Okay, I worked there. You had to put them in one of those double pans soak them in the water for like an hour and a half and then they were reconstituted that's weird are they going to hire weird. robots to run the drive through so you don't have to well, they just had to put the quarter pounder on they're going to have everything. george they're going to have george carlin taking your order <laughs> <laughs> what do you want fat ass you probably will be able to roll and be like i want um who do, who would you like to take your order and i'll just hit richard pryor <laughs> <laughs> i can't do him fuck that Plus every other word of his mind. Would you uh, use the app mobile app today? Three. <laughs> Are you going to use the mobile app today? Okay, I'll take Gary Shandling. Gary Shandling, I want him to take my order. <laughs> oh, God. Um. All right, so... Um, Artie. Artie. <laughs> he wants to know what you'd like to eat. <laughs> yeah, Rip Torn. I want Rip Torn. Drink it, you pussy. <laughs> the salty dog. Yeah, well, and now there, you did uh, say brioche buns that they did it before, but the difference is now they're going to be sliced with a thicker bottom. Oh, yeah, oh. fat bottom buns. Mm -hmm. Thicker <laughs> bottom, and the sesame seeds will be further spaced out. Get rid of the sesame seeds Don't altogether. Yeah, the job of spreading the sesame seeds <laughs> a little further. Sesame seeds serve no purpose except getting stuck in your fucking teeth. Where's the last time Agreed. I went to McDonald's? I'd like a large Coke with that. We had a Coke. Excuse me? We had a Coke. All right, I'll take an unsweet iced tea. We only got sweet tea. <laughs> uh, I'll just take a water. Bottle. And then uh, you, you drive away and it's a fucking Sprite. I, I, what, before I grew up, I used to, if I got the wrong stuff, I'd just throw the bag in the, um, in the parking lot out of the car window. 
dump it. They fuck it the drive through. But now it's too expensive to do that. So you just got to take it home and eat it. This is before you grew up last week. Oh, uh, yeah. The last time I did that was probably a year ago. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Steph. You're welcome. Hey, we want to thank our two big sponsors who've been with us for a number of years. Uh, Mike Hall and Atlanta Pizza in Gyro. Thank you to Mike. Thank you to Atlanta Pizza in Euro and everyone at the restaurant. Atlanta Pizza in Euro is setting in for a nice winter season with over 40 beers in cans and bottles and 16 beers on tap with a focus on local Georgia and Southeastern craft beers. They really have a great selection of beers to complement your delicious pizza, which is very, very good. I had pizza the other day and I was like, I wish this was Atlanta Pizza in Euro. I almost wanted to drive there, but it was 10 o'clock at night. This is coming from Mike and Atlanta Pizza in Euro. They want to help thank all the radios for listening to this podcast. So if you stop by over the holidays and New Year's and mention you heard about Atlanta Pizza in Euro on Radio Labyrinth, you will get a free dessert, which is very generous and very nice. So go there. You can't pass up free dessert. Take the kids. Uh, the food truck is taking a short break after mid-December, and uh, that'll go through February due to the winter weather. But there's always exceptions. And if you're interested in a specific date, just contact Mike Hall at 770-483-6228. They are open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday from 11 to 9, Saturday from 12 to 9, and closed on Sunday so families can, so people can spend time with their families. So do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, what are you waiting for? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They've been in Athens, Georgia since 2005. They have a fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706-316-9366 or you can email them at Athens at L-D-I-L-I-N-E dot com. Guys, are you reading the online comments? Gotta read some of these comments. I'm loving your guys' comments. You're reading your own comments? Yeah, they're really good. I worked hard on them. The secret is don't read the comment cards. I came here to talk to someone about this, get some perspective. Turns out I can just read the fucking YouTube comments. All right, so we get your comments. If you leave comments for us, we're going to read them. Uh, radio comments here, there, and everywhere. First of all, we got from Poopy's Pappy. Happy New Year, you four. So happy New Year to all four of us. Uh, Brett Perkins wrote, old hands here. Love you guys. Happy New Year. Referring to Fallout War. War never changes. And I don't know what that means because I never played Fallout. <laughs> but I am looking forward to the series and having Pickle join us for the for the Patreon show to talk about it. Is he no, little... I forgot to ask him about that, but I'm going to. All right. We talked about the uh, the the that we're, Dustin's making the shorts on YouTube. And I'm astonished by the uh, number of views we got. And we got tons of comments on them. So I'm going to read some of them. Now, we were talking about the, the Star Wars, the female director who, you know, and blah, blah, blah. It's about time that the women tell the story. Okay, whatever. Uh, but we did get good comments about it. Uh, John Sunlight wrote, the Star Wars franchise is done. Okay. Might not be. Brett Perkins wrote, second, just make a good season to end Andor. Which is, you guys all liked Andor. Uh, Dave RV2QQ said, I don't see the problem. Dr. Hugh is, Dr. Who is brilliant. No, really, it hasn't been completely fucked up, smiley face. Uh, Streaking Clothes said, just make it good. That is literally all that matters. And that's the point we were trying to make last week. Uh, followed up by Bailey Arnold, who said, uh, don't fix what ain't broke. I don't know why this whole movement, they have been pumping out remakes with the saddest pity attempt to have a diverse cast. Uh, they always had diverse cast. To the point it almost comes off as a fucking parody. Oh, and a whole new storyline. They do know they can make their own new movie, right? You know, like they have done in entertainment for all of eternity. <laughs> uh, somebody, you know, bro, thanks so much. This man can speak for all men on this. Thank you, to, uh, thank you, bro. The truth needs to be told. I don't know that I was telling any truth. I was just sharing my opinion. Uh, Gen X woman chiming in here. These silly little girls today don't know their own craft history. Dude is spot on. I'll also add Sarah Connor in the Terminator series. You know how you know it was better than today's woke garbage? Ours made enough money that they could make more of them. She Wolf Kira. Good point. Um, see, uh, if a movie sucks, it sucks. Sorry. That's Mike Brick City. And then a lot of other people were saying, uh, I second that. I don't like... Oh, here's the last one. Kenny the 
Awkward Donut 9137 says, Facts! I don't care if you call it woke or not. I don't think there's anything wrong with representing a wide range of people because people are varied in real life, which is true. There's nothing wrong with wanting to see people of various backgrounds on the big screen. But for crying out loud, please just use good actors, writers, and directors. Writers in particular. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Me too. Thank God we have AI. Where, have you sworn since uh, January 1st? You know what? I ha- I've only had a couple of slip ups. I've been doing really good, except uh, until this morning. Yeah. What happened? Uh, the foster dog. Wow. I, I have to say that I probably said every cuss word that was ever invented and I made Steph up some done, new ones. Steph done fudged up. Uh, it was bad, but I had to. But I, I reset. Yeah. I had a talk with myself. I sat down with me and I told me we weren't going to do this today. And yep. we didn't. We didn't. Good. We turned it around. Turned it around. You. Heroes and clowns. Yep. <laughs> well, we we put it on uh, on uh, Facebook to see what words you could use in lieu of swear words. So I'll read some of those. Emily Hine Warren says, "Cheese and rice." My Cheese best- and rice. My bestie used to teach preschool, good. and she taught me that one. Cheese and rice. Yeah, I want to try a couple of them on, like a like a sock or a mm-hmm. shoe. Yeah, cheese and rice. Cheese and rice. Brian Jackson said, I had a coach when I was 12 who used the word cuss in place of the curse word. So, boys, you're playing like cuss. <laughs> oh, I like that. You That's pretty down little home. cuss. Yeah. Don't cuss yourself. <laughs> uh, I think we're cussing all out in the yard. Freddie Hammer Hamer says, oh, my heck. <laughs> oh, my heck. Now, you have to say that in a southeastern Pennsylvania accent. Oh, my heck. Oh, my heck. Keith Burrow said, dagnabbit. That's a good one, Dagnabbit. Dagnabbit. Now I do say that one. That's one I have used over the last few days. David Harrison says, I think Steph should use Deadwood language when she has to urge, has the urge to cuss. I am not that talented. That would be extra swearing. Well, no, the, there's a website that shows you what they actually used for slang, and it wasn't all those curse words. Uh, Michael Thornton says, I invite you to ingest a satchel of Richards. <laughs> <laughs> quite proper I like that one mm-hmm. uh, Che Butler in traffic when getting cut off or something my dad would yell you dip stick <laughs> Sam Wells says fiddle sticks fiddle sticks yes that's a good one that's, Ira that's a Mal- quick one that is a good one Ira Malkin you remember fucking Ira he says oh I got some fucking advice for coach <laughs> and uh, Jeff Leboff who is one of the co-hosts of this show, said, you fought against sneaky bastages. Which I, and I have been doing some um, Johnny Dangerously. I would like to direct this to the distinguished members of the panel. You lousy corksuckers. You have violated my fargan rights. This summon ambatching country was founded so that the liberties of common patriotic citizens like me could not be taken away by a bunch of Fargan ice holes like yourselves. Thank you very much. That's, that was good, Jeff. You you know me. You and your bastages can gamble. You ice holes. You yeah. stupid yeah. ice holes. You Fargan ice holes. I love quoting that. And, and I, I did it to Eric Von Hessler, my boss, a couple of weeks ago. And he goes, what's that? Oh, God. God. I said, you never saw Johnny Dangerously? And he goes, uh. What if he would have said, what if he would have turned to you and he, and he said, once. <laughs> My mother grabbed me once. Once. He didn't get that either. He didn't get, I went, I go, you shouldn't interrupt me. My father interrupted me once. You shouldn't hang me on a hook. My father hung me on a hook once. Once. I want to eat dangerously. This gun goes through school. This gun shoots through <laughs> schools. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, and David Al- uh, Harrison also adds, in a, a bit of irony, as I was reading this, I was listening to one of the early episodes where St- Steph said, fuck you to Ira, and they all thought she was mad. And one of my favorite Steph quotes was, I'm not mad. That was my pleasant one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What did John Mark Lindell, he just put a... a an emoji of a chicken and a and a lollipop. It's not a chicken. It's a cock. Right. Uh, Mike Hall uh, from Atlanta Pizza in Euro, he wrote, use old TRG on your curse wares like she-ought, F, 
Dugan. Biatch. Biatch. Tiatz. And uh, let's see. Alan Barker wrote, yeah, I'd fail miserably. Might as well try to stop breathing. And then Kevin Jackson wound up with, uh, what the French toast, pickle you kumquat, cootie queen. Who are you calling cootie queen, you lint liquor? Isn't that from that commercial? Yeah. yeah. What the French toast? Did you think I wouldn't find out about your little doo-doo head cootie queen? Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? Pickle you kumquat. You're overreacting. No, Bill, overreacting was when I put your convertible into a wood chipper. Stinky McStink face. You Hoboken. Yeah, that was a great ad. Mm-hmm. Forever to... So, Steph, good luck to you, and congratulations on your your no swearing. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Today's usually the day when people give up on their New Year's resolution, so good good for sticking with it. Look, nice this, is, this is me. Like, when I say I'm going to do something, like, for real, I'm going to do it, I do it. Yeah. You don't Except get your, for succeed. You don't, get your, <laughs> you don't get your pastry all in a bunch. I don't. <laughs> Views. Or, 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 and snooze. Views. Well, last week's were Echo, Society of Snow, and Grimsburg. I haven't watched any of those yet. Neither have I. Watched, I watched Echo, and it's bad. Yeah, it's, 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 it's I'm, not I'm good. seeing bad stuff about it. Yeah, it I looks like they it, dumped it all at once. Yeah, it looks like they, and they're uh, putting it on Hulu, too. They told two high school kids and gave them a video camera and said, work out your fight choreography and we'll just right. use that. Uh, <laughs> is this Marvel? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, that's too bad. Uh, Nine Lives Of on Vice. You guys are going to watch that show? This looks pretty cool. They're doing different stuff every every week. I think the first one's going to be Nine Lives of Vince McMahon. Oh. So what is it? Like the people who've been... Uh, canceled, Scan- and... scandalized. Yeah, I think they're just doing different. Oh, okay, the a different person fall, every week. The rise and f- the rise, fall, and rise again of our favorite cultural icons. Their stories are undeniably inspirational. You got looks like I'm seeing all sorts of different people in this this image. You got Johnny Depp. Okay, yeah, that looks interesting. I always like yeah, that. Mike that usually does good job with these kind of shows. I gotta watch it on my phone though because I don't. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> Uh, Self Reliance on Hulu. This is Jake Johnson's from New Girl, his new directorial debut. I want to see that. That looks yeah, good. It looks pretty good. Looks very he, funny. He plays this guy who's they're trying to kill him, but he can they can only do it when he's by himself. Mm-hmm. So he's like trying to recruit all these people to hang out with him all the time. And if he doesn't, they, he gets thirty million dollars. Yeah. Right. Well, I think it looks good. Yeah. Okay. Did you see? And is it, it is it Netflix that picked up Meeks? Because Showtime canceled it, but or whatever, and uh, somebody else, they picked it up. So oh, they did pick back. up Minx? Mm-hmm. Another network mm. is, is going to, cool. or another network, another streaming service right. is making a new season of it. Apropos to nothing, did you guys all watch Louder Milk? Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Back when it was on. Steph, did you watch it? Couple episodes. It's on, uh, it dropped on, on Netflix, Netflix now, yeah. Everybody's yeah. talking about it, so I just wondered if I should try it. So everybody in my family are talking about Suits now. <laughs> yeah. Now that it's on Netflix, I'm like, where were you fucking 12 years ago when I was watching it? Harris watches Suits. <laughs> Y'all ever watch Eat? Yeah, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I felt like at Christmas. And then you made uh, that reference that nobody got it. Yeah. You know, uh, After Midnight, uh, this is the new show, Taylor Tomlinson. It's, it's the late night show. It's kind of going to be a little bit like At, at Midnight, the Chris Hardwick show, game show. Yeah. Who's that? have a bunch of celebrities and stuff on it. Who's the host? Taylor, Taylor Tom- Tomlinson. Eh, it's too late for me. Yeah, I'm still gonna watch it. Is it a game Maybe. show? The same? That's what, I don't know. Thing? It's it's supposed. It's made by the same people that made the game show, but you know, Chris Hardwick's not hosting it, and I think that they're trying to make it a little bit more like a talk show. She's pretty funny. It's gonna be following Colbert. Yeah, she is funny. I, I'm gonna watch it. It's sure me. You'll you'll see clips of it, like Saturday yeah. Live. So yeah. All right. I'll tell you. If it's funny, I'll watch. Let's do our staff picks. Uh, mine is just fly on the wall with Michael McKean. Is it good? Yeah, it's uh, it's still obviously recorded before Dana yeah. went out for family leave or whatever, but they talk about Spinal Tap quite a bit because Dana was in Spinal Tap. Yeah. He was a mom. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Mom oh, is yeah. money. And they talk about cone heads because 
spade and they talk about the new spade that movie I haven't got to that part yet, but I hope they do. Yeah, I'll check that out. Steph, you got one? Uh, yeah, mine is a it's a, a new album that I'm really digging. It's a Detroit youngster who uh, is a little rapper named Stoop Lee, and he's writing lyrics, which is very exciting to me because none of these youngsters write lyrics anymore. It doesn't seem. They just mumble and up money and butts. But Does uh, he, this... Is he a trap rapper or is it no. like... No, he's saying. not a trap rapper. Not at all. Oh. He, he's he's a definite Midwest rapper. He's got a, a certain sound, just like uh, Kanye had a sound, like Common has a sound, like Lupe Fiasco. They all write lyrics, and then they have like a smooth delivery, and then the music is nice and smooth. But his name is Stoopley, and I want everyone to listen to him, and so he'll get huge. I actually sent his uh, one of his songs to Diallo Riddle, and he loved it, and he shared it on his stuff. He's like, I haven't heard him. I loved him. He's great. Cool. Anyway, so check out, um, it's called Blue Version Tape, and it's just an EP. It's like five songs on Spotify. Um, Cerulean City is like my favorite song or whatever, but that's my you pick. Go, you go to his website on the About Me page, and it says, take your favorite Saturday morning cartoon, a bowl of your favorite cereal, add some dope beats, and you capture the most nostalgic experience that is Stoop Lee. Yeah. And his mu- his music is great. I mean, like it's it's really good. I really like it a lot. If you if you are a hip hop fan and you are missing, you know, something good because like nothing good hardly ever comes out anymore in that genre. <laughs> this is good, Dustin. Um, I'm, mine's podcast. It's the Y Files. I talked about it on the Patreon show last week, but um, but yeah, I, I kind of went from the YouTube videos to the full si- full podcast, and I mean. I didn't realize how big the podcast was. He's like in the top 20 on Spotify. Really? Yeah. Huh. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, if you like conspiracy theories, but you, but it's not something they're shoving down your throat. It's just presenting everything to you. And then he turns around and knocks everything out that could possibly, you know, he researches them very well and uh, leaves you to make your own decisions. So I, I really like it. He's doing a good, he does a good job. The only thing that bothers me is to fish, but I can get past that. <laughs> really? You don't like the fish? Well, he has a talking fish that sounds like the Jerky Boys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does. But it's still good. I mean, he, he's really up on what he's doing. Uh, my staff pick is uh, a book that came out in November uh, by Getty Lee, who I didn't know until I listened to the started listening to the audiobook. His real name is Gary, but he's got a million different names. But it's because of his parents who were because hey, you're Scottish. Yeah. No. They are uh, Eastern European Jews. His mom and dad met each other in a concentration camp. So I never knew any of this stuff. But they would always call them Geddy. Hey, Geddy. And so Gary Geddy. But he starts the book off talking a little bit about, you know, him himself being a nerd and all this stuff in school. And then he says to the audience while you're listening, and I assume if you're reading, that the next two chapters are going to be about how my parents met and how they came to Canada. And if you're not into that and you want to just get right to Rush, Go ahead and skip to chapter four. I hope you don't do that. But anyway, so I listened to it. And man, if and I, I bring this up because of some of the stuff that we talked about earlier in the show and all the stuff that's going on in the world right now. Uh, to Dustin's point, there's conspiracy theories that say certain things didn't happen in the last century. Well, obviously they did. And if you're our age, you were taught all these things in high school. And we're, we're far away from that now. And I don't know if they teach it there anymore. But... Uh, most of Getty Lee's family was killed by Germans. And he tells this story about how they met and all the tales that his mother told him. And then his father died when, when his father was 45. So he was, Gary was a teenager. I don't even think he had his bar mitzvah yet. And, uh, and, uh, Getty talks about, I mean, it kind of sort of wraps up with him going with his mother back to Poland and how even in modern times, the Poles were pissed that the Jews who lived went back to their towns to try to get their houses or get their property or get their shit back. And the Poles wouldn't let them have it. Cause, uh, it, anyway, it's just really amazing. And, and sometimes people forget or don't think about it enough or, or just to, to, to think about the horrific shit that Jews in Europe had to go through in, in the 1940s because of Hitler and just hearing Getty Lee tell it and he does all the accents and, and, you know, he has a, a certain charm of the way he speaks. Uh, but to tell that tale, it, w- it was a nice reminder of stuff I already knew, but I had, had may have forgotten. So 
not to be preachy, but you know, I've always liked history and I've, I know an awful lot about World War II and the American Civil War. Those are the two things I always had a lot of interest about. And uh, it really affected me. So now I'm on chapter four and we're, we're getting, uh, and then I got my bass guitar and then I got this and this, and that's where I am in the book now. But I recommend it if you're a fan of Rush or even history or just anything in general. I think good, I'd like to hear that. I watched a, their documentary that came out a few years ago and it was so good. I loved it. I love Rush. They're one of those bands mm-hmm. that... I've always really kind of sort of liked and, you know, it wasn't really until I was in my twenties when I started listening to them more than, you know, cause same, I don't know why, but I just did. Yeah. I heard an excerpt from that and I'm sure it's coming up, but, I, um, man, I won't spoil anything, but he, he, he talks about when Pert, when Neil died, when Neil Pert died, mm-hmm. how quickly he got phone calls from drummers. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he was like, you know, I, I don't know if he drops names or not. Yeah. No, hey, we're not doing that. Yeah, well, yeah, and he has that Canadian accent. And he also talks about people he went to high school with, one of them being um, uh, Rick Moranis. So that's interesting. There's a lot mm. of cool stuff. In the book. Um, so let's do the plugs. Thank you, guys. Uh, you can check out Trambles, the the show that I, I try to do every Monday, and so far I haven't missed one yet except for the holiday. Uh, I have a radio show. That's, by the way, the audio-only version of me just ranting or talking about something that comes out on Mondays on the Radio Labyrinth podcast feed. Podcast is the show that I do on uh, Saturdays on WSB Radio. Also a podcast. You can find it anywhere. It's the podcast with Tim Andrews. Um, if you're looking for a cameo, I'm on there at Tim Andrews here, or you can check out our friend Mark Schrankel. He is Mark001. We are back on with bowling if you would like to do this. Um, our second longest sponsor is LDI Repro Printing, and that is our friend Brett Perkins. He has reserved a bunch of lanes for us on Saturday, March 9th at Bolero in Lilburn, Georgia. And uh, there'll be free sodas, and uh, we'll have more details about that in the coming weeks. But mark that date out on your calendar. We'll have the time and everything soon. But Saturday, March 9th, if you want to go, it'll be uh, St. Patrick's Day themed. So we would love to have you out there. It'll be a lot of fun. Like uh, Bring your black. green bowling shoes. Yes. Oh, yeah. By the way, the bowling shoes will be included, I was told. So uh, it was a very nice thing for him to put together for us. And uh, we're, we're like I said, we'll have more uh, information about it next week. <laughs> yeah, uh, nothing. Burfield's not going to be anywhere this weekend, but uh, they we sure could use your help. So if you are interested in fostering, we need fosters so so, so, so badly right now. And uh, we've got some softballs, some easy dogs that are in boarding. We just don't have anybody to take them. And it's they're not in boarding because they're wild or whatever. We got some easy ones. So mm-hmm. uh, go to our website, BarkvilleDogRescue.org, if you fill out an application to foster or adopt or just volunteer and help us out. Uh, please give us your money. We'll take every dime that you have. And I also want to say thank you to Chris Ellingswood, Ellingwood. Uh, one of our longtime listeners, he messaged me this week. He's looking for a senior dog for his parents. His parents, they always adopt senior dogs. They're such little sweeties. They're mm-hmm. actually going to Gwinnett Animal Shelter because we didn't have something that met their criteria. So they're going to the shelter tomorrow to meet a dog there who was probably going to be on the kill list for this week. So mm-hmm. good luck to them. And I hope it works out. And her name's Roxanne. And I hope it's I hope it's great. So I, I'm just saying I love all Here's how they contact me about dog stuff. This happens frequently. I don't always talk about it on here, but um, I, I love it that you guys reach out to me and I will always try to help you any way I can. Well, be careful. You're getting another song at the end of the year. No. <laughs> no, Dustin. I think if we you, know if that you have now. Cats, if you I have, have a mental stuff. illness that you cannot possibly grasp and it starts with compliments and you put it in a song i'll kill everybody in the room i don't you dare if you have any cat stuff you got to reach out to tim as cat williams yeah well then again i never had a pussy like that that i never had a calico cat and i did get in a fight with a in a park with a teenager i don't know if that's true or not as much as i you know how i am with the puppets i I I can take them or leave them but now i kind of wish you had a cat puppet a cat puppet an actual feline cat that you could make cat with. <laughs> hey, everybody. Meow, meow. <laughs> yeah, do a cat with like a nice perm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> slick it out. Have his hair shaking nice. And yeah, and it's Cat Williams. You can call it Meowy Mike. <laughs> 
It's next Friday after the fifth Friday. All right, guys, we got to go. Thank you for listening. Thank you guys for all the shit that you guys do, you three. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Until that time, keep it. Keep it canon.